Good morning and welcome to our program on this Lord's Day morning. We're so thankful that you've chosen to join us and we hope that you have your Bible ready and are prepared to study from God's Word today. We would also like to invite you to join us in services today at Pyburn Street Church of Christ. We will come together this morning at 9 o'clock for Bible study. We'll have classes available for all ages. Following our Bible class period, we'll enter into the worship hour at 9.50. We will also come together this evening at 6 o'clock for our evening worship service. And then we gather on Wednesday evenings at 6 o'clock for midweek Bible study. We would love to have you as our guest at any or all of these upcoming services. The prayer life of Jesus must have been very impressive to his closest disciples. Many times, in fact, around 16 times, we find Jesus praying alone or in private places. And then we also read many times of him praying in public at times when others were able to hear the things that he was having to say. On one occasion, Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples, Luke 11 and verse 1. Jesus responded by giving them a short model prayer. He says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. This prayer has four specific parts. First, it is addressed to the Father. Second, it gives reverence to the name of God. Third, it makes four requests, namely, that the kingdom come, that we have daily food, that our sins be forgiven, and that we be not led into temptation. The request that the kingdom would come has now already been fulfilled. We should now be praying that the kingdom would spread. The request that our sins be forgiven requires that we be willing to forgive others who have sinned against us, as we find in Luke 3 and verse 4. But immediately following Luke's account of this model prayer, Jesus illustrated it, that just as a friend will give to someone who asks for bread, even though it is at an inconvenient time, so also God will give to those who ask him. Therefore he exhorted, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. Luke 11, verses 9 through 10. Jesus promised his disciples that whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. John 14, 13 and 14. But in order to receive what is requested, we must believe that we will receive it. Whatever we ask from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. 1 John 3 and verse 22. And also we read in 1 Peter 3 and verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, but his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Jesus taught that people ought to be persistent in prayer. He told a parable about a widow who wanted justice against her adversary. She pleaded with a judge who neither feared God nor respected man, and although he refused at first, yet because the widow kept pleading, he relented lest the widow beat me down by her continual coming. Jesus said that unlike the human judge, God will give justice speedily, Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. Paul admonished that we be constant in prayer in Romans 12 and verse 12, and that also we pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17. In Luke 2 and verse 37, we're introduced to a lady by the name of Anna who was known for fasting and prayer both night and day. Cornelius was a devout Gentile who prayed continually to God, Acts 10 and verse 2. 
Jesus also taught that people should pray humbly like the tax collector who said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and not like the proud Pharisee who said, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. Jesus said that it was the tax collector, not the Pharisee, that went down to his house justified, Luke 18, verses 9 through 14. When giving his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Matthew 6, verses 5 through 7. Jesus, we read of him blessing the food when he fed the 5,000 in Matthew 14 when he fed the 4,000 in Matthew 15, and also when he instituted the Lord's Supper in Matthew 26. On two other occasions, Jesus thanked God in his prayers. In Matthew 11, verses 25 and 26, in Luke 10 and verse 21, and also in John 11, verses 41 and 42. But also, we are to be thankful in our prayer lives today. Jesus prayed for children. He exhorted his disciples to pray for those who abuse you. On the cross, Jesus prayed for his enemies. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He prayed that Peter's faith might not fail. He admonished his disciples to pray for laborers to work in the harvesting of souls. He prayed that his disciples might be united so that the world may believe that you have sent me. In the garden, he prayed for himself, Father, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus' model prayer, his teachings about prayer, and his own prayer life must surely have been influenced or must surely have influenced the prayer life of his disciples. After Jesus' ascension into heaven, his disciples stayed in Jerusalem and devoted themselves to prayer. The disciples prayed that the Lord would show them who should replace Judas, Acts 1 and verse 24. And after the church was established on the day of Pentecost, the disciples devoted themselves not only to the apostles' doctrine, to fellowship and breaking of bread, but also to prayer, Acts 2 and verse 42. When the apostles Peter and John were arrested and placed in custody by the Sanhedrin council, the council charged them not to preach in the name of Jesus. But when they were released to their friends, they prayed and they continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Acts 4 and verse 31. When the church at Jerusalem was unsettled because certain Hellenistic widows were being neglected, the apostles determined to select men to serve their needs, but resolved to devote themselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word, Acts 6, verses 4 and 6. As Stephen was being stoned to death, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them, Acts 7, verses 59 and 60. When Philip went to a Samaritan city and preached the gospel, the apostles Peter and John came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit in Acts 8 and verse 15. At Joppa, Peter knelt down and prayed before raising Tabitha from the dead in Acts 9 and verse 40. When the servants of Cornelius arrived at Joppa to request that Peter come to Caesarea to tell Cornelius about the gospel, Peter had been praying, Acts 10 and verse 9. After James was killed by Herod, Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church, Acts 12 and verse 5. Then we see after Paul's conversion, he was in Jerusalem and was praying in the temple when the Lord told him to leave because the people would not accept his testimony, Acts 22 and verse 17. When Paul and Barnabas were returning from their first missionary journey, they had elders appointed in every church with prayer and fasting, Acts 14 and verse 23. And since there was no synagogue at Philippi, Paul and others went outside the city to the riverside on the Sabbath day where they supposed was a place of prayer. There they spoke to the women. 
And Lydia and her household heard and were baptized. As Paul concluded his third missionary journey, he spoke with the elders of the church at Ephesus, and afterward he knelt down and prayed with them all, Acts 20 and verse 36. While Paul and those with him waited for a ship to be unloaded at Tyre before leaving, they met with the church and knelt down on the beach and prayed with them in Acts 21 and verse 5. When Paul and Luke and others were on a ship during a stormy voyage to Rome, the crew let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for the day to come, Acts 27 and verse 29. When day was about to come, Paul urged them to eat, taking bread and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. And safely arriving on the island of Malta, of Malta Paul visited the father of Publius, who lay sick with fever and dysentery, and he prayed, and putting his hands on him, healed him in Acts 28 and verse 8. In addition, the Apostle Paul informed others that he was praying for them, not for their natural, physical, or material well-being, but for their faith and spiritual well-being. He informed the Romans that he prayed for all Israel to be saved. He prayed that the Corinthians would do no wrong and that they would be restored. And he also requested that the Corinthians help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. To the Colossians he wrote, We have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and in understanding so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, may you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Colossians 1 verses 9 through 12. Then to the Thessalonians, Paul wrote that we pray most earnestly night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith, 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 10. He also wrote that we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power, 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 11. To Philemon, Paul wrote that I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ, Philemon 1 and verse 6. He also requested that the Colossians pray that he would have an open door for declaring the mystery of Christ while he was in prison, Colossians 4 and verse 3. Regarding prayers for the sick, James wrote, Is anyone sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. James 5, verses 14 and 15. Friends, your prayers can be powerful. As James tells us in James 5, beginning in verse 16, Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working, or the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. Now although Jesus and others did pray occasionally about individual blessings during this earthly life, their emphasis in prayer was not primarily upon earthly needs, but upon spiritual values. Now something that we need to consider John put this emphasis very well when he wrote to Gaius, saying, I pray that all may go well with you, and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. 3 John 1 and verse 2. Friends, should that not also be the emphasis that we have when we pray to our Heavenly Father? Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today. We hope that the Lord blesses you today with a wonderful Lord's Day.